What's this? To the best of my knowledge, these belong to a script of some kind. They can be found all over Tevat, but they've never given up their secrets. There's still a lot to learn about them. And as for why they should ever have come to rest here, a true mystery. Let me make a copy first. I'll make time to go over them in greater detail after our research. <sighs> Another thing for the don't understand list. Unsolvable mystery this, weird experiment that. It'd be nice to get some cool results for once. Seems like if you want the reward, you gotta pay the price. I've truly gained a lot from all this. Comparatively, the little reward I can offer is too small to mention. Let me return to the campsite first. By the time you get back, I may just have a fleeting miracle for you to witness. Paimon's kind of looking forward to seeing the result of all this brain ache. Unless you can think of anything better to do, let's head back to the campsite. Not so fast. You're not leaving until I'm convinced that nothing dangerous is going on here. <gasps> you! You didn't leave the mountain? I most certainly did not. And I've witnessed everything that you and Albedo have been up to. I must say, you let your guards down. Or maybe you were drawn in by his compelling sounding hypothesis and friendly demeanor. Taking orders from a complete stranger? Drinking anonymous potions? Participating in all kinds of strange experiments? I'd sooner believe you were tricked than that you would be so naive. Or perhaps, you were colluding from the beginning. Sister Rosaria's guard's so high, she can't even see over the top of it! It doesn't matter what you think. He could be a saint for all you know. But I understand him a little better than you, Outlander. I'm only concerned with one thing. Whether his alchemy has transformed you into something more sinister. No way! Paimon would have sensed it! And anyway, he didn't even use any alchemy! With an alchemist of his level, you wouldn't sense a thing. In any case, I'm not about to let a potential threat back into Mondstadt. So... what are you gonna do? <laughs> I've got to hand it to you. You have your moments. If I can be sure that nothing you came into contact with is dangerous, that's good enough for me. I've investigated everything else. The only items left on the agenda are these symbols. But we don't even know what they mean. Hmm. That much is true. Not to mention, seems like there's nothing more to them. But for insurance purposes, I'd better make a copy. Hmm. <sighs> This is now a location of interest. Regular patrols should be set up here. Now then, all things considered, I deem that you pose no immediate threat. Which is what I was hoping. I would have been one very unhappy sister if you'd made me work overtime on your account. Overtime? Before we go our separate ways, Outlander, a word of advice. Don't be so quick to trust Albedo, and don't repeat the same mistakes that you did this time. You made a lot of rash decisions today. She's gone! So stubborn. Mondstadt doesn't have many people like that. Huh. Never mind her. Let's go see Albedo! needs assistance. You're back. Good timing. I've just about reached the conclusion. You took quite a while. Did you get held up on the way back? Uh, I wouldn't worry. She's just doing her job. Time for the results. We got a myriad of data today, 
and it was very difficult to finish all the research in one go. But the integral preliminary conclusion that I can offer you is... you're very much like a human from this world. You couldn't tell that just by looking? We spent all day working our butts off for that?! Please, I understand that this may have seemed self-evident to you, but in fact, nothing in this world should be taken for granted. Have you ever considered that the world of Tevat may have a natural hostility to Outlanders? I mentioned the natural laws of this world. You're able to converse with me here without consequence, and nothing seems amiss. But it's arguably a small miracle. The only other life form that, like you, has come here from afar is the seed that I mentioned. Under the effects of Tevat's natural laws, it isn't even able to sprout, let alone bloom. But, after I observed you, I had another idea. Imitating you helped to inspire my alchemy. And so... Whoa! It looks like something's appearing! The transition from nothing into something, from shoot to stem, and now to fruition. Is not nurturing otherworldly life also nurturing the world itself? <sighs> it would seem that that's as far as we go. A transient bloom of incomparable beauty. Life's proudest achievement. With all our efforts, it might have bloomed forever, and it didn't even have any fruit. Life is a manifold tapestry of free entities. Its value shouldn't derive from how long it stays with us. Even a momentary burst is precious. A short life can be well lived. A life lived efficiently, lived to perfection, is necessarily one unburdened by loneliness. So. Do you understand what I meant about us conversing here arguably being a small miracle? Uh, things feel a little heavy right now. <laughs> Don't be sad. You've got Paimon to look after you. Albedo, Paimon really wants to be your friend. Thank you both. Even if dispelling loneliness is not essential for life, it certainly doesn't hurt. Your help inspired me to discover the means to make a flower bloom. I mean that the time I've spent traveling with you in the mountains was a valuable journey for me. In the future, if the need arises, can I solicit your help again? Well, glad I can count on you. I made a point throughout of telling him how ordinary the results were. But what was that sediment I saw forming at the bottom of the vial? It should not have been there. What could it mean? Those born of earth are bound by its imperfections. But those born of chalk are free of impurities. You and I are alike. Both composed of a substance that has yet to be fully defined. If, one day, I lose control, destroy Mondstadt, destroy everything. Can I rely on you to stop me? <laughs> <laughs>